Okay, so it's not quite Christmas, but it's that time of year we start thinking about things that we want to buy for ourselves and for the photographer in our life. So in this video, I'm going to cover five things that are cheap, cheerful, perfect stocking fillers for photographers. So let's get started. So in one, we have gaffer tape. Looks like duct tape, available in many colours, but it is not duct tape. It is gaffer tape. It's spelled a couple of different ways, depending on where you're buying it from. Um, I'll put the spells on the screen. The difference between gaffer tape and duct tape is gaffer tape is designed to tear easily. It, when it goes on, it's supposed to come off without ripping paint off. Ah, Jesus Christ. Ah, I forgot I had hairy hands. Um, <laughs> oh, God. Right, okay. So gaffer tape, extremely useful to a photographer for marking things on floors. Um, it comes in various colours. I have white, black and grey. Use it for various purposes. Sometimes you want it to blend in. Sometimes you need it to stand out, holds down cables, um, hopefully doesn't mark walls, holds up backgrounds, marks where people need to stand and videos, all that sort of stuff. Oh, gaffer tape, usually about four quid a roll. So moving on to the next thing on our list. Where are you going? We've got the next thing here. Are these things? These are Velcro cable ties. Come in black and come in white. Um, get them in both colours if you can. Usually about three to four pound for about a hundred of them. And we use them all sorts of ways in the studio and when we're out and about for tidying up cables and for holding things in place. They're not very big, but they're reusable, unlike normal cable ties. Literally just make a loop, put them together. Great for holding cables in place, but I've held other things in place with them before as well. You can often make a loop and if you need them to be a bit longer, you can buy longer ones. But equally, you can just loop two together. And it'll do the same job. So you can get these on Amazon, about four quid for a hundred. Um, last time I bought them. Again, I'll put the link in the description below so that you can order some for the photographer in your life. Okay, so the next thing on the list, it's probably the most expensive thing on the list. But if you stick to the very end of this video, I will show you a couple of tricks that I have to help you find the best price possible on Amazon for the, all of the items in this video. Okay, so what am I talking about? I'm talking about these little LED lights that go on the top of a camera. This one is from Godox, um, the Lightamon's LED 6R. Um, a very bright little light, it's not a flash. So this is particularly useful to anybody who's doing a little bit of um, event photography or prefers natural light generally. Now, it sits on the top of your camera where the flash goes. It can do, you can stand them on a foot as well and just stand them alone. And they normally have a little pin in the bottom so you can put them on a tripod if you needed to. So they go on the top of your camera. Now, why would an event photographer be interested in one of these? In event spaces, particularly if you try to use natural light, um, you'll often catch somebody with their face in shadow. And what happens is, you have shadows that you want to fill in. This light is bright enough just to fill those shadows in on somebody's face um, without the unnatural look of flash. It'll also place a catch light in their eye, which the photographer knows is a, within the eyes, there's a little white dot that helps to bring a photograph alive. And another thing, the iris of your eye in a dark space, like at a wedding, an evening reception, that sort of thing, um, or any sort of event that's in sort of indoors, particularly one where you can't use flash, the center of the eye, the pupil goes wide and you lose the color of somebody's eyes. You shine a bright light in their face and their eye immediately closes down and you get that beautiful color in their eyes. Now, this Godox one is a little bit on the price side, but it's still only about 25, maybe 30 pounds. Um, and the reason it's a bit more expensive is because as well as being able to change the color temperature, you can also change the color. And it has loads of special effects and things on it as well. But you can get Cheaper ones that are usually just a white light, like this little Instro one, which I think is about 15 pounds. Um, which again, just turn the brightness up and down. In this one, you can just change the color temperature a little bit. Um, and what a lot of these do, and this is particularly one of them, is they have spaces so you can add extra ones on the side if you need to. Also a particularly useful thing, if you're, again, at an event, a wedding photographer, for example, um, who wants to take a few little photographs of things, you know, the trinkets on the table, that sort of thing, you can get a little foot, so you can stand this on the floor on its own, 
turn it on, stick it on the table, create a little bit of light on the photo to raise the quality of it by quite a lot. And they have internal batteries that charge by USB-C and these are well worth purchasing for pretty much any sort of photographer. Um, they're actually quite handy just to have in your bag as well if you're out on a, a dark area um, to find your stuff. But if the photographer doesn't know what these are for, if they're not particularly experienced, um, then show them this video. Okay, so next on the list, we have books. Photographers are always interested in photography and further education and learning. Now, I know if you are not a photographer yourself, it can be quite difficult to know what sort of book to buy for a photographer. So I've got some recommendations for you here. Now, these books, a part of a series of books. All different authors, but the same editing team. They're called Mastering Something Photography. So here we have Mastering Black and White Photography, Mastering Landscape Photography, Mastering Street Photography, Mastering Portrait Photography, Mastering Composition. Now, I think there's a, I've also got at home a Mastering Child Photography um, or Child Portraiture. These particular set of books come in in between 15 and 20 pounds. Sometimes you can pick them up as a bargain in Costco of all places in the UK um, for eight or nine pounds. So picking a book for a photographer, these are educational books, but these, this particular series of books is extremely well put together and they start off from the very basic to the quite advanced and therefore they are suitable for most photographers. Now, which one you pick for the photographer in your life or for yourself is a slightly more complicated thing. Now, you can, of course, simply go for the one that you think they're most interested in. So get the landscape photography one for a landscape photographer, the portrait photography one for a non-portrait, for, for a non-portrait photographer. Get the portrait photography one for a portrait photographer. The composition one, for example, would be useful for anybody. But what I would suggest is that most photographers are interested in all genres of photography, even if they've been drawn to one in particular. So if you're unsure if they might already have this book, buy one for a genre that they don't have or that they don't do. And I'm pretty sure they'll be happy with it and it might spark a little bit of creative interest for them in a new genre. Now the next item is to be found in every single photography bag that I own. Never leave home without one. Well, most of the time. And that is a lens pen. A lens pen is a tool that fits in your pocket, fits in your bag, and there's a clip to fit in the top breast pocket of a shirt for cleaning your lens. If the photographer in your life is regularly seen wiping his lens with his t-shirt, he needs one of these. So you have a soft end for wiping the lens firmly, and you have a brush end for dusting your lens or your gear. If you want to push the board out a little bit more, you could get a cleaning kit similar to this one that I um, reviewed on this channel previously, which is the VSC GO one, VSGO one, which contains a few more bits and pieces, basically a fancier um, looking lens pen, a rocket blower, which is another way to get things off, um, lens cleaning fluids, wipes for cleaning sensors, stuff like that. It's a little bit nicer, a little bit more expensive. One of these will normally set your rack about nine pounds-ish. This, I think, is about 20, 25, so it's a little bit more on the more expensive side. But you can never have too many of these. I have at least five. Um, I wouldn't be upset if I found one of these in my uh, Christmas stocking as an extra one, because I keep them everywhere. I think I even have one in the glove box of the car. All right, so at the beginning of this video, I promised you, or at some point during this video anyway, I promised you I'll give you a couple of tips on how you can get the things that you want for Christmas for your photographer um, cheaper. And that's why I'm publishing this video so, uh, so early. I'm filming it on the 4th of November. Hopefully I'll have it out in the next 24 to 48 hours. Now, if you want to buy the thing immediately, go to Amazon. I'll put the links to everything in the details below. When you see the price for the product, Go down and see if there is a box that says available cheaper from other sellers. 
Choose that box, go in, and you will find that the items are available at a lower cost, usually from lower sellers, but with a much longer delivery time. So these are normally third-party Amazon sellers. Um, Amazon wants to show you the one that comes in quick, which is normally slightly higher price, but if you order early, hence it's the beginning of November, you normally get a better price from a seller who is shipping them from further away from you. But also, if you would rather get the fast shipping, you'd rather buy it from Amazon, and you're prepared to wait until the price drops, then there is a fantastic website called Camel, Camel, Camel. I'll put the link in the description below. Go to Amazon, get the URL from the top for the product that you want, any product that you want, then go to Camel, Camel, Camel.co.uk and create a price drop alert. Um, then Camel, 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 so catchy, isn't it? They will send you an email when the price drops to either the price that you've set or simply from the below the price that it is currently. So you can watch out for anything that you want to buy, particularly stock and fillers that are coming up in the Black Friday sales. Or what you'll often find is right now, the price might be slightly higher than it's going to be closer to Christmas so that they can do that line through that says 25% off for Christmas um, as it makes it feel like more of a bargain. Um, so sometimes the prices in early November are slightly inflated. Um, but anyway, I hope you find those two tips plus useful. I hope you found the things in this video useful. Um, if you have any feedback, then please let me know. But the greatest bit of feedback would be for a subscribe or a thumbs up. Thank you very much and Merry Christmas.